Hello and welcome to Andy Shed Live. This is Series 7, Episode 34, for Sunday the 20th of September, 2020. Hello there and how are you today? I hope you are doing well. It's a... Uh, it's a new uh, a new week and of course a new show here uh, here at Andy's Shed. Yeah, excuse me if I can do a bit of chomping um, this evening. But I'm uh, I'm sucking on a throat sweet because I've been, been feeling a bit croaky today. So uh, I'm I'm sucking on the old uh, on the old throat sweet here. And uh, yeah. Um, hello to everybody who's in the chat already. Remember if you are watching this live on YouTube you can come in and uh, and join the chat apparently there's five people here already and we've not been on a minute yet crikey um I'm just just put in the chat right so i can see it all in the right order yeah uh christopher 2000's here dominic's here as well evening all hi how are you all doing as i say excuse excuse the throat sweet it's a strepsil not uh, not affiliated um <laughs> but uh, yeah so I, I'm, I'm chomping on the throat sweet because every every little sort of it's got a little bit of a headache and a little bit of a little bit of a sore throat there. I don't think they're COVID-19 symptoms though, are they? Headache and a sore throat. So um, I think we're okay. Hopefully we'll still be here next week. If we're not, you know what's happened. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm I'm chomping away this week on uh, on that so just have to bear with me a moment while we're while i'm doing that as always if you want to get in touch with us here of course you can either get on the live stream you can leave us a comment or something or you can go and find us over there at the uh, at the website at andyshed.colpress.net if you want to um Right, if you've got any questions or anything in the comments, feel free to stick them in there. Um, Dominic's uh, come out with one already. He says, something I've been thinking about is when exactly the last 746 was made. The last 746 telephone in the UK, when was it made? Uh, we know fairly well when the 746 has first appeared, but I'm not sure about when production stopped. Very good question that, Dominic. Uh, I understand that towards the end most were refurbs but there seems to be no clear date for the end of production yeah it's tricky that one because the very end of the 746s were of course eight 746s i.e. the phones that already came with the modern UK plug and socket thing on for those of you that are not in the UK, not familiar with it perhaps, one of those. If your phone was made with one of those, or came delivered with one of those, it was an, it had an 8 in front of the number, so 746 became 8746, um, and uh, a 741 became an 8741, if such a thing exists. I'm not sure such a thing existed, actually, it was an 8741, but there you go. Um, but... So, technically speaking, the last ones wouldn't have been 746s, if you want to be pedantic about it. The last ones would have been 8746s. So, 746s stopped probably very early 80s. 8746s stopped probably late 80s. Because the last ones were the brown ones. Because, as far as I know... All your telephones up until the early 1980s were rented. You never bought a phone in the UK. They were all, always rented. And, and you paid a rental per month or per quarter for them. Um, but the 8746s were bought from BT shops or telecom shops as it was then. And the very last ones were the brown ones you could not rent a brown 746 in fact i don't think a brown 746 exists i think technically they're all eight 746s if they're brown and they called them the yeoman phone this is when they were giving names to thing the things and and basically 
I think like the trim foams, the, the fancy colour trim foams that were around in the Phoenix foam range at the same time. I think they were basically refurbished foams, but they came out with a different number on the bottom. They came out with 8746 instead of 746. Um, so I, I, I think they were they were refurbished. So technically speaking, the foams of that shape would have been 8746s, and the last ones were probably the brown ones. Or at least certainly the cases, because the cases had to be new, because they were brown, they were a different colour. But the rest of it could have been refurbished. But when the last actual complete foam rolled off a production line, somewhere like Plessy or somewhere like that, no idea, but I would, I would guess at very early 1980s. Um... Um, don't yeah, Dominic says he thinks it probably happened in around about 85, 86 if you include 8746s. Yeah, yeah, but the 8746s I think would have been would have technically been rebuilds. Um so but I don't know about that. If anybody's got an 8746, look on the bottom, is there a sticker? And is there something else under the sticker? Um Christopher two thousand says Something funny happened to a GPO 64D bell set. When it rang, it fell off the wall. Why did you cut it held up there with a crystal? I supposed to stick it up with blue tack, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, Jim is here as well. It says, evening, folks. Anybody know what part of a dial 21 has to do with the mic? I can't get any mic to work, and I've ruled out all down to the dial. Right. I'm just thinking about how I explain that because it's a little bit complicated, but basically when the dial is off normal, i.e. when it is On the move. No, it's not the microphone. That's the that's the speaker. It cuts off. But does it cut off the microphone? I'm wondering, Jimmy. I'm thinking about this because I'm not sure. I'm wondering. If it's the dial that's not returning properly, or if it's something to do with the hook switches. But you're saying, I'm assuming you can take an incoming call on it okay, you know, you can lift it up and it stops ringing and, and you can hear the people on the other end. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's okay. Would I also be right in assuming you've also taken a microphone element out of something else and that you know works and tried that and already tried that in it? Have, have you have you done that? So that that would be the first thing. Take a known working mic element, put that in the handset and try it. Have have you done that? Um, right, I'm catching up on the chat now. Uh, the dial works when dialing out, but no mic working. Um, and Christopher says he had two screws holding the 64D on the wall. Um, and says, yeah, I just got nothing from the mic. Jimmy says, your internet keeps buffering, or is it my internet? Um... I've got no idea. I've got no dropped frames here. It normally tells me if I've got dropped frames. And I haven't got any dropped frames. Um, this end, it it kind of sends it out at a very low resolution stream. If I, if I do that, you'll see my hand sort of disappears. It goes all... It goes all... All sort of... Almost vanishes. 
and that's because we send it a very low bit rate and a very low frame rate um, because the internet here is rubbish it's basically talk talk provide the internet here through utility warehouse so you don't actually know it's talk talk and it's rubbish don't have all whatever you do um, Oh, Dominic says the stream seems fine for him, so it must, must be your internet then, Jimmy. Sorry, you're not having a very good week, are you, mate? Not having a very good week at all, eh? Um, but yeah, going back to what we were saying about this, uh, about the Sound 46 phone, I've a suspicion it might be something to do with the hook switch. Have I got one handy anywhere around? Uh, right, bear with me a minute. Um, I don't think I have, actually. That's a trim phone in there. That's in the bottom of there. That's a, oh, that's a wall phone. Right. But hang on, that wall phone I might be able to show you on that. Right, I've not got a 746 to hand, but hopefully I might be able to show you on a 741 instead, because it's basically the same innards in it, pretty much. Uh, right, I'm just moving, moving things, so I've got room to perform. Human says, this phone is on about the 746, and it's a beautiful red Mark 1 from 1971. Has it got the letters and numbers on the dial battle? Because it probably would have. I don't know if they all did at that stage, or if by then some had the blank bezels by then. But certainly some at that stage did have the lettered and numbered bezels. Right, I'm going to take this apart and... Um, I've got the thing again where the desk shows all the rubbish on the desk, but it doesn't actually show what you want to show. Right, here we are. Right. I'll just take the top off this a minute. I'll take this little screw out of the bottom of here. This fancy this fancy screw that they used to put in the bottom of these this one if anybody knows if anybody knows where you can get these screws these screws where, where am I these screws um, I would be very interested to know because uh, they're a very fancy shaped screw and if anybody's got a bag full of them anywhere I'd be interested in purchasing a few um, This is why I have trouble getting the top off this phone, isn't it? Yeah, oh, come off. This is why I have to go and get my tape again. Right, bear with me one second. I'll be right back. Right, I'm back. Now, I don't know how many times I've done this on this show, but every time I do it, somebody on YouTube watches it at some point and goes, Oh, wow, that's clever. I didn't know you could do that. I was wondering how you did that. So, for about the hundredth time, I'll show you how to get the opal off the middle of one of these dials. Press that down and pull up at both sides. Pop, like that. Right. 
Right, and then take off the finger wheel. And this is all to get the blooming case off. Over American 500, where you don't have to go through this ring all to get the case off. Um, take that off. Right, put all that together there. <laughs> Still don't want to come off. But there we go. Right. Got a fast way to put things. I'm running out of spaces to put things at the moment. Getting a little bit full down here. What you can't see off camera down here. Um, right. Don't it say, yeah, most alphanumeric bezels are up to 1968. Yeah. They went on though, Dominic, because they were certainly still fitting onto phones in 1971. Because there's a film made by the GPO at the time where they're taking a phone in 1971 I think it is to a subscriber on a farm and as the engineer is carrying it in his hand you get a close shot of it in his hand and it's a 746 like yours exactly like yours the Mark 1 746 with the alphanumeric bezel on it right what we're, what we're looking at here is this switch down here now because this is a war phone, the mechanism that operates the switch is a bit different. But the switch is the same. Okay. The switch itself is the same. And... And it's this little switch in here, which has got numerous contacts on the back. And I forget how many are on the back. How many contacts are on the back? I have a feeling it might be five. But I'm wondering if there's a problem there with that. The other thing that you might be having a problem with is what's on the back of the dial is the contacts on the back of the dial now if I can just take this apart show you what's on the back of the dial. Dominic said, do you know where to view that film you're talking about, Andy? I believe it's on YouTube, Dominic. I believe that's where I saw it. I downloaded it because I've got a magic thing that lets me download YouTube videos. Um, but I believe it's on YouTube. The only problem is I can't remember the blooming name of it. Um, but bear with me a minute and I'll see if I can find it. Um, no, um, let's get this lot off here. What I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to show you inside a dial and I've not got an unfitted one. Right. In here, there's various contacts. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera can I install another camera I'm wondering um, no probably not um, right let me get this one down so I can get this camera down and, and we'll have a look this way right so here's Here's all your contacts on the back of your dial. And the dial is at the moment on the normal position. Now, the thing is this thing here. Can you see this? That. I wish I could turn the lights off on this webcam. That's it. 
It really is somewhat annoying. And I can't switch them on. If I can do that, does that help? Is that any better? All right. Right, this contact here is weird because what happens is it this thing that goes around on the dial on, on, on what is a plastic bit on this dial, but they're not always plastic. This touches on the V-shaped bit of this contact, but only when it's at the rest position, and that breaks two sets of contacts because this contact here is separate you see to the bit with the v-shaped thing on it so the bit with the v-shaped thing on it actually pushes that away if i can rotate this dial a bit right you can see there see those two contacts have closed now when i let this dial go it'll obviously open one contact but the little white plastic bit on the end of that v-shaped bit will then open the other contact as well can you see that's open both sets yeah now the key is when you when you move it like that so they're closed the key is so that set that is to the left that you're looking at there make sure that that plastic bit on the end of one of the contacts that meets the other one make sure that there's a little gap opens up there to make sure both sets of contacts when it's off normal like that are closed but equally when it's on normal like that you let go of it to make sure they're both open yeah so they should be both open yeah okay then on the other side if I can get around to it the pull there's only one contact there and and that is the pulsing contact and that should be closed until you're off normal yeah, as soon as you're off normal, that shouldn't open until you dial a one, or you know, or, or any other figure. And you can, because what happens is, if I can do it with one hand, no, I can't do it. But the, let me get my thing. This turns over. And as the dial returns, this pushes against this and pulses things. So, when your dial is at normal, i.e. when you're receiving a call, and you should be, uh, the dial's just sat there, and you should be able to hear people, what you should have is that contact which is on the uh, right there as you look at it should be closed and the two contacts on the left there uh, as you look at it should be open yeah and the dial should be wired like that so going left to right it should be orange pink which is the high one brown which is the low one gray and blue so orange pink brown gray blue can you see that that's how that's how they should be now where those where all those little screws are those little screw terminals are behind those screw terminals on the end of the all these contacts that come out of that block there that block is actually made up of a sandwich 
of lots and lots and lots of insulated layers, then layers that aren't insulated and all kinds of things. If that's been taken apart and put back together in the wrong order, then it won't do what it should do. So, if check your Dale contacts first, make sure they're all clean, and make sure that pulsing contact is closed, and the two on the other side are open, yeah? And make sure it's wired the right way. Orange, pink, brown, grey, blue. And if that's all correct, then my next thing that I would, uh, I would suggest um, would be for you to try um, perhaps uh, using a different phone and putting that dial in a different phone just to make sure that dial is okay okay because you're on the right way you're on the right lines to suspect the dial but put that dial in a different phone and test it in a different phone then you'll know if the dial is the problem or not um, right I'm looking at what Jimmy's saying now Jimmy said I put another dial on the phone and it was fine it's something to do with the actual dial. So for some reason, it's stopping the mic from functioning. Uh, the original carbon mic on my 963 Daikon 706 has deteriorated. I think I'll use a later mic from my Donor Gray 706, but keep the original mic somewhere so I have all the original parts. Um, yeah, there's ways of doing things with those microphones as well. So it's definitely for the dial then, Dominic. Because you've changed the dial, and when you change the dial, it works. The microphone works. Is that what you're saying? Can you just confirm that in the chat for me? Of course, it'll take a few minutes, because what you see is behind. <coughs> so by the time you've seen it and replied to it, it's quite a bit of time has gone for me. Um... Oh, yeah, it's a great Andy. I will check those contacts. I never knew that bit, so I'll check that. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it you again. Um, just because I've still got the camera here. But you basically got, when you look at the back of the dial, there's two lots of contacts on the left and one lot of contacts on the right. Yeah. Those two on the left should be open when it's on normal. The one on the right should be closed. And when dialing, those two, as soon as it goes off normal, the dial, those two on the left should close. Yeah? And that's the wiring order. Orange, pink, brown, grey, blue. Okay? So that's as much as I can tell you. But even if the contacts are closed when they should be on that. Um, oh, I've got the wrong camera on there. I've said all that and you weren't actually on the camera, were you? With it? Right, here we go. So the two. Right, let me get it in the right place now. So as I was saying... The two contacts on the left should be open when the dial is at rest at normal and the one and the one on the right should be closed. Yeah? The two on the left should be open, the one on the right should be closed. The two on the left, as the moment it goes off normal for dialing, the two on the left should close and not open again until the dial is back at its normal rest position yeah and the um the wires are orange pink brown gray blue but be careful of this stack of of things behind these screw terminals if you take that stack apart Chances are you'll get it back together in the wrong order and you'll inadvertently be shorting together something that you shouldn't be shorting together. 
I know this because I've done it on a number of occasions and I'm very good at getting it wrong and I'm really watching out for it and I still get it wrong sometimes because it, it's just really, really difficult to get in the right order because there's a lot of it. There is a heck of a lot of it. But that is, as best as I can tell you, it's something to do with your dial. Um, right, shall we put all this back together? Now I've took it all apart, I better put it back together because it was working this. <laughs> right, so we'll put this back together, so. First thing I need to do is basically get this plastic bit back on in the right place there so that lines up with that little hole there that screw's got to go through in a moment. back on and again that lines up where that little tiny screw has to go through and we look for the little tiny screw then that I've lost on the desk somewhere and put it there that little screw that goes then in that hole there like so um, and this is weird of course it's a wall foam so it's a bit oddball how this one all goes back together but we tighten that one up that clamps it there it just clamps the ring onto the dial so now look move around then engage its two sort of feet in the little slots there and then the that end there we fit this little slotted thing between the, uh, the dial clamping ring and the head of the screw and we do that one up to clamp it in place like so and then we have the fun of getting the case back on because of the button on there it makes it really difficult if you're watching a few weeks ago when i took this off it took me ages to get it on before um i'll just catch up with what's on the chat don't it says original carbon micro 963 diacon 706 has deteriorated Right, um, right, right, Jimmy says he put another dial on the phone and it was fine. It's something to do with the actual dial, so for some reason it stopped the mic from functioning. Um, I put the dial on an 81 phone and had the same issue it's definitely the dial then isn't it jimmy it's definitely the dial that is the, that is causing you the problem there so a bit, you've done a bit of good diagnosis there by swapping and changing bits around and working out exactly what the problem is um so yeah it is it's definitely the dial that's giving you an issue there i would say um it's the dial that needs uh needs a coat of looking at. Meanwhile, I've got to get this case back on here now. Right. No, got, to get, got to get this back on to there. This will not be easy. I absolutely promise you. Because um, it never is. get something stuck in it somewhere uh, 
every single time something gets stuck somewhere along the line when you do this they really were not well designed these cases for going onto these films I don't know who did it you know certain things you know the name of the designer you don't know the name of the designer of these do they because they won't bloody admit to it um, you know when a designer designs something good you find out who they are don't you like when Harry Beck did the London tube map and things like that when, when they do something brilliant they admit to it when they do something crap they go oh no I never did that designers for you that is right done it I think yeah I think I think we're on I think we're on yeah despite all of the GPO's best efforts I have actually managed to put the case back on successfully um, all right so now I need that little magic screw like I said before if you know where you can get any of these anybody let me know um, and the little magic screw then goes in that hole there and it's a magic screw because it's a fancy shape because the theory is I think that when you actually get it all the way in there it should go pretty much flush with the case so shall we see if they're right Oops. I've got the dropsies today I've been dropping lots of things today um, right, here we go. My voice is feeling a bit better though. I think the straps will work. Um, Alright, there. Ta da! So that's back in. So now all we've got to do is rebuild the dial again. So, so we put the finger wheel on, put the screw in the middle, making sure it's the right sort of screw to go with the finger wheel, i.e. if that has got like a countersink in it, the middle of the finger wheel, make sure you've got a countersunk screw. If the middle of that is flat, make sure you've got a screw with a flat back. Because put the wrong combinations together and that's how you can crack the finger wheel. And both combinations do exist. Um, so that's back on. I'll put that back on for now. One one thousand and one, and it's about right. It might be just a little bit slow, but that is basically it. So I hope we've uh, I hope we've managed to sort uh, sort that out. Uh, Dominic said, did you say that you can rejuvenate carbon mics, Andy? I see on a forum that tapping it might help. Uh, it seems to be an old transmitter number 13 pancake mic. Um, yeah, you can. I've done it with a trim phone one. I can't say I've ever done it with any of the other types because I've never had need to, um, really. Um, right, let me put this phone away before I drop it or anything silly. Um, I do like the wall phones. Awful to work on to get into, but I do like wall phones. Um, they get equally tangled up though, like the other ones do, as you can see. Um, right, I'll just put this back in its box. There we go, sorted it. Right, um, 
Yeah, right. Carbon microphone. Just bear with me a sec. Just, uh... um... Right, I'm just catching up on the chat. Just bear with me a second. Um... Oh, no, I have then. Right. Christopher 2000 says he got a 1974 PMG 801, which is similar to a GPO 706. Um, and it had the handset wired wrong. It had dial tone uh, where the mic and the mic where the receiver is in the handset. Um, so we had to switch around all the wiring. See, this, this is a classic problem um, that these phones have often been messed with now <laughs> when you get them. Um, you know, you're not getting them straight off the wall from the little old lady who's had that phone installed on her wall since 1972 or whatever. Um, you know, you're getting them, somebody's had them before you and maybe tinkered with them. Maybe they're going to restore it or something. Um, and, and they've tinkered with it and got fed up with it and maybe just bunged all the terminals back on where they basically thought they could remember from when they took it apart 10 years earlier and then they've gone and sold it on the car boot sale and it's all wired wrong and things like that. So stuff like that happens all the time. Um, so sometimes your best bet if you've got a wiring diagram for the phone, sometimes your best bet is to dismantle everything, which you might want to do to clean it anyway. Sometimes the best bet is to dismantle everything and start from scratch, building it up as per the wiring diagram, not as per how it was when you found it. Um, um, so yeah, right, carbon microphones. Yes, you can rejuvenate a carbon microphone. Um, 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 um. I haven't got one, to, I don't know, hang on a minute, let me go and see if I can find one. You're in luck. I've got one. Right. I've got one. Carbon microphone. Okay. Carbon mic. Um, now. Basically, these microphones, what they do is when you speak into it, it jiggles a load of little round carbon balls around inside it that are kind of inside it. I've never said packed inside it, but they're not really packed. They are a little bit loose. And as because they need to be a little bit loose, because they need to be able to move against each other as you speak, that vibration from the sound makes them move. And it's that movement of these carbon granules that when a current is put through it, it changes the resistance with the movement and that's what gives you the waveform for the sound. Now the, what happens is they get damp and get stuck together and that's why people say bang it on the desk. And, and you can be quite brutal with it when it's not in the phone. You know? uh, and sometimes you can unrattle. I can't hear this rattle at all. Now, I've got no idea if this is a good one or not, um, but I can't hear it rattle. But, shall we take it apart so you can see what's inside it? Um, 
You're dying to... I know you're just dying to know what's inside it. Um, uh, Christopher says that 801 phone that he got that was wired wrong. It looked brand new. He thinks the wiring was done wrong in the factory. Um, it could well have been. It could well have been. Um, could have been a Friday afternoon phone in the factory. Um, right. Here we are. Right, let me see if I can get it a bit more in focus for you. So, I've never done it with one of these. I have done it with a trim phone. This, just for interest, this is an STC manufactured one um, from 1970. And what you're going to need is a little pair of side cutters like this. And basically, You've got to try and get under the edge of here. And it is a bit destructive, this. You can end up knackering the thing. But if it's not working anyway, um, you know, what have you got to lose? But basically what you're trying to do is just lift this edge up under here. Uh, Keith G says, uh, the old wife's tail was to gently warm gently warm them in the oven to dry them out um yeah I, I can imagine that would possibly work but i'd be worried about melting the plastic but certainly the warming bit is sensible maybe put them in the airing cupboard or something um if you've got an airing cupboard that is um or or if you're christopher 2000 put them outside on the doorstep it'd be nice and sunny ain't it where you are a bit um Oh, if only it was sunny here. <laughs> right, so what you have to do with this is just lever that edge up. Right, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, but I'm just levering that edge up because it's a bit like how they put the top on a, on a milk bottle, how they put the foil top on a milk bottle, and you've got to kind of lever the edge up to get it off. You can do it with a very, very tiny screwdriver if you've got one of those, uh, like, jeweler screwdrivers to hand. And that come in those little sets. You can do it with the what's it one of one of those with the with the um, the flat bladed one of those. Patience is a virtue. Doing this, I, I, I have to say. start to hear it perhaps coming loose as you as you start to get around the key is hold it all together as you're doing it uh, I don't think it says they could probably try it because it's got the earlier old metal type in here yeah, well, you've got the metal one, but I think they are pretty much all the same. Um, I mean, I know at least one phone restorer who sells his phones for a lot of money, who always puts an electric microphone in them, always takes the carbon transmitter out, and he sells his phones for a lot of money as restored. Now, OK, it may be better sound quality. Well, it is better sound quality. There's no two ways about it. But I wouldn't really call it restoration, that. I would call it refurbishment, but not restoration. Um, you know, because, for my mind, when you're restoring something, you should be restoring it to how it was. And, and if maybe that's not as good as modern things are, then you should be restoring it to not as good as modern things are. You know, you should be doing it the way the way it was, sort of thing. Not 
not sort of sugar coating it and putting modern bits in what you know to make it better you shouldn't be making it better than it originally was you should be making it as it originally was that's what restoration is isn't it yeah while we say tapping dominic for this when we say tapping we do we do mean very rigorous tapping uh, you know, slam it down on the desk sort of thing. Don't be scared of it. Right, I'm getting there now. Uh, Key G says, as an engineer, we just chained them out to Mike 21s. Even the later refirms uh, came with came without the 21 fitted. So the later refirms still came with the carbon granules ended the Keith. I would have thought by then they would have gone on to the electric mics on everything. Maybe the carbon granules were cheaper. Right, I've gone all the way around this now. So I should now be able to get this tin cap off. Right, what's going to happen is just the back's going to come off for a start. And when the back comes off, you see an inside then. Now, that now looks a lot like the earlier type doesn't it the, that looks very similar now to the earlier type of transmitter um, so there's your plastic bit but now I've still got two metal bits here because if I hold the outer edge of this I can rotate the inner bit you see so I've still got two bits the key to this now is hold it this way up yeah and now try and take the top off yeah so now you've got that off yeah Now, you've got a sort of clear plastic thing here, which is a bit different to the one in a trim foam, but I'm assuming the idea is the same. If you can pull this off, all right, and it all come off together. The clear plastic's coming off with a layer underneath it. All right. In the middle of there, you've got something which is basically covered in carbon. Yeah. And that little bit in the middle of there is what makes contact with the little carbon balls. And the little carbon balls are in the centre of there. Can you see them in the middle of there? Yeah? Now if I get a pin, that's where I'm going, so it's all going to go to part. You see, I can stir them up. And see, a bit of carbon floated out onto the edge of there, but that's not little carbon balls, that's ground carbon. But they should be tiny, tiny balls of carbon. Or at least they are in a trim foam. They are most definitely balls in a trim foam. Now in this, it looks different because the bits are smaller in this. And to be honest, they don't look very carbony because... They look shiny, it's almost like glitter. But in a trim foam, the, the little carbon balls are bigger than that. In the trim foam one that I took apart. Not by much, but they are a bit bigger. But that is the stuff, and that is what all clumps together. And what you need to unclump. So, probably the best way to do it 
And the way I eat it with the trim fold was I took all the little cold balls out and put them all back in again. But having done this, I think this is too small to do it with. So I would say with a pin, just make sure it's all mobile. Don't sneeze, whatever you do when you're doing this. Just make sure it's all mobile. And there, make sure you've got rid of any excess. And then you can start thinking about putting it all back together. So this has got to go back in. If I can park this, I will just to just to show you. That is a very sort of thin aluminium disc, I think it is. And that fits, and then this bit in the middle is what makes contact with the carbon. And that's basically like the paper bit in a speaker, but working in reverse. So that goes on there, and this clear plastic film on top to protect it. And then that can go back on the inside of there, like that. this goes back on like so and then what you've got to do is somehow push all this edge back over again and not too bad once you've got it started I mean it's, you're never going to be able to roll it like it originally was but you can carefully with a flat bladed screwdriver or something just gradually go around and can you see I don't know if you can see how that's turning back in again I do be at the other side then you've got it locked on then it will not all spring apart on you um, I'll let you do the rest of it not an easy job but it is doable now the carbon people say why is the carbon balls um, basically it's little round balls in the trim foam they're, they're much more pronounced as, as little round balls in, in, in the trim foam one that I took apart you could see they were definitely like little tiny marbles in this it just looks like carbon dust and maybe it is um, but in the trim farm they were definitely little balls and I've always been told they're round because they need to be able to move against each other and they were deliberately made around so they could move against each other um, that's uh, that's what I've always been led to believe anyway 
like uh, oh, you know, don't get in depth things like this from Telephone Heritage Group do you um, all right talk amongst yourselves while I carry on if anybody's got any more questions at all or anything feel free to drop them in the chat and uh, We've, we've lost a couple of people. A few, a few less people here than there were. Have, have I gone a bit too in depth for some of them? Do we think tonight? Uh. Um. Do, 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 do. Jimmy says this is a very interesting episode. Yeah, three people don't think so, Jimmy, because at least three people have read the stream. Um, I don't know who, but just, I can just see a grand total of the number of people there, and it's three less than it was. Um, I originally started these live streams to be like what they call slow TV, you know, where you could actually watch me do a restoration of that in real time, and this is very like that today, <laughs> isn't it? It's not exactly the fastest pace bit of uh, entertainment you've ever seen, is it? This is a really good example of somebody asking a question and, go, and me going off on a bit of a tangent because I never expected to be doing this today. Um, had you said to me when this day started that I was going to be taking apart a, uh, a telephone microphone, I would have gone, what, but why? <laughs> um, but if you want to know, you want to know, don't you? And I know what it's like when you get to a point in a restoration where you just don't know how to do it. And you think, I need to know how to do this. Where do I find out how to do it? And the trouble is, with, with, tele with vintage telephones in the UK, there's a lot of very theoretical uh, material out there that you can find on the internet or that, or you can join various groups and that. But when it comes to the actual practical stuff of doing it, there's a million and one like YouTube videos on how to uh, how to convert uh, an old phone and fit a line cord, but there aren't any on how to do things like this. Right, I think I've basically done it now. It's not too bad. Um, it's not as good as it originally was, but it would go back in. Still doesn't rattle but I have confirmed that the carbon granules in that are good so that will probably work the problem with microphones is you often don't know that they're not working because it's the person on the other end obviously that's receiving it and the person and it'll sound fine to you because you're listening to their microphone but that but if they say you sound like you're eating a bag of crisps or something that's that's the carbon microphone that's probably on the way out, you know, because they can hear shh, 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 as you're talking. Um, Jimmy Meyer says it's the best hour of the week, nearly as good as all creatures, great and small. Yeah, nearly as good, but not quite. Yeah, I'm going on a visit as well, Jimmy. Sometime, sometime soon, right? We're going to. I'm hoping. We're going to be able to do an Andy Shed live, live from Darabee. Now, hey, I'm hoping. Maybe at Christmas, possibly at Christmas or, or in the run up to Christmas. We're hoping to do an Andy Shed live from Darabee. I'm also quite open to one from Blackpool Illuminations as well. But that's another story. Um, yeah, yeah, done it. Back in one piece, I think. <laughs> right, I, I think we've cracked. Oh, somebody's come back, or oh, somebody new has joined. <laughs> but that—that's how you take one of these, uh, one of these uh, old carbon microphones apart. And, 
and basically basically you just need to jimmy around the carbon inside it you know you need, you need to give the carbon a poke inside it and I just took that apart and literally poked it but as I say <coughs> tap it on the desk is, a, is another way of doing it um, Uh, Chris Wizard's down says the speaker's like the one in the 746 handset. Yeah, yeah, it, pro it, yeah, it probably is. Um, yeah, it's not the speaker, it's the microphone. Yes, it's, it's, it's the microphone that we've got here, not, not, the, not the speaker. Um, but yeah, so that, that's how you do it. While we're, while we're on about electronics, do you want to see something else that I've been working on this week? A friend of mine's an antiques dealer, and he got a 1970s radiogramming. Can you remember radiograms, the stereograms with the record players in? Well, he got he got one. In fact, he got two of those in quick succession. Sold both of them. One of them, the bloke who bought it, he had it a few days and it stopped working. And what happened, we think, is the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors, gave up inside it. So I've got the innards out of it. And I've just redone the electrolytic capacitors in this today. For those who don't know, these little things here. Oh, can you see? No. These little things here, these little sort of tin can things, these are electrolytic capacitors. And, um, and I've replaced them all in this today. So this week I'm going to be putting this back in the stereogram and seeing if it works. But that's just that's just another thing that uh, that we've been up to. I can never work out which way is left and which way is right when I'm doing something on camera. Um, but yeah, that's that that's another thing that we've been that we've been up to this week. Stereograms. Uh, Christopher two thousand says, "Do you know what it means when the speaker inside the handset makes a static sound?" When it's not the microphone uh, on on the phone, right? If it's if the speaker's making a static sound, is the static coming from the phone at the other end of the call? That's that's the first thing to ask yourself. If it's not coming from the phone at the other end of the call, then there's two things it can be. It can be interference on the line, even if it's just an internal line. It's just connected both connected to a PABX or something and you've got two phones there ringing one to the other there can be something in the room that's interfering with the wire that goes between them um, the other thing it can be it can be a dodgy handset cord does it make any difference if you wiggle the handset cord around so you know, so so you've got your phone and you, and you're hearing all this static on it. But if you start jiggling the handset cord, does it make it worse or go away um, for a bit? Because if it does, then it's the handset cord. Dodgy handset cords are very very common because obviously a handset cord does get moved about a lot, and the mechanical forces of it uncoiling and coiling, uncoiling and coiling that. It does sort of break the uh, what what is normally copper inside them. Not always. Sometimes aluminium uh, cord cords, which are which are very bad. Um, but it, but whatever the metal is in it, 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 it can break it. And if you jiggle the handset cord around and it makes a difference, then it's a it's a dodgy cord that is sort of half broken and half not sort of thing. So. Handset cords are the thing. If anybody needs any handset cords as well, remember um, for any uh, for any phones, or if you need any phone bits at all in general, um, have a look at my new shop here, enzemporium.colpress.net, um, because I have put some phone spares, some original phone spares, uh, up on there. Um, and there's going to be more going on soon just when I get round to it. I haven't put any more on this last week because, to be honest, it's been a bit hectic this last week. What with stereograms and things coming in. Um, so there. So yeah, that's that is, uh, is about that. Um, 
Chris says, no, he changed the speaker to another speaker. And they're on static. Hmm. Right. Then you got what you got to do, Christopher, is um, is like we were saying earlier about uh, about this problem we'll not be able to hear on this seven four six. Is if you've got another phone that is a good one of the same type, change bits over, and it's kind of pro and then change them back again, and it's process of elimination. I think that, I think that's the that's the best way to do it. So you change the speaker and there was no static when you change the speaker. So the static is actually in the speaker of the phone. That's, that, that's what you're saying. In that case, it sounds like it's a damaged speaker. And if it's a damaged speaker, there's not really a lot you can do with it. If you're really, really desperate, you can have a go at repairing the speaker. But generally, it's not worth it. You know, generally you just get a new speaker element from out from the inside of the handset like like these like these microphones it's not generally worth messing with them you not you would normally just swap them out um, but um, but if you've not got one of the right type I mean these ones for the 746s and 706 and that are quite common but the one that I originally took apart was a trim phone one and I needed to get it going and I, you know because somebody had bought this particular phone off me and um, and it had come back and said people on the other end say I sound say I sound like I'm eating a bag of crisps um, so we had to get it going so we took the, the speaker apart and no we took the microphone apart and that's why we jiggled it the bits about because we haven't got another one to replace it with um, and as these things get older and spare parts become harder and harder and harder to get hold of um, then you are going to have to start um, repairing more repairing stuff that originally uh, like was it Keith earlier uh, yeah, Keith, like Keith said earlier, as an engineer, he used to just swap bits out. But now you can't get the bits anymore, perhaps. So you do actually have to repair the parts now. So in a way, we are doing much more technical stuff than probably the telephone engineers back in the day did. Because they would have a, a load of spare parts they can just swap in and swap out. Um, but we are having to repair what we've got um, so in a way what we're doing is probably beyond what some of those telephone engineers would have ever done uh, in the field All right. uh, JC says hello hello JC Right, have, have I covered everything in the chat? Have I covered everybody's questions and that? Have, have, have we missed anything? Is uh, is what I what I need to ask? Have we have we have we managed to cover everything? What I what I would like to say um, before we go is if there's anybody on here who is not subscribed so far, please do give us a subscribe um, because. We are trying to get to that magic thousand subscribers. And when I looked earlier today, we were at 860, I think it was. Um, and we're trying to get to that magic thousand so YouTube will let us monetize the uh, the content again. Which was monetized once before, then YouTube changed all the rules. Because they said they've not got enough adverts to go around, and now they're running adverts every two minutes on certain people's streams and not letting me run any at all. Don't get me started on YouTube, just don't. Um, Dominic says, it's a very interesting episode, Andy. Uh, my dog passed away 
sadly last week so it cheered me up a little watching this stream oh i'm sorry to hear that dominic um yeah I'm, well I'm, I'm glad we've cheered you up that that's that's what we aim to do basically um so I, i'm i'm glad you're uh, i'm glad you're uh, you're feeling better about it and i'm very sorry to hear about your dog uh, i've got an old dog here as well i think she's asleep in the other room pippa she you sometimes hear her padding about on the floor as, as i'm here um but she's 12 and uh, and she was she was a rescue dog and she gets a bit fed up on a sunday night because i give her a tea and then i come and do this and she, she comes in here and looks up at me and goes oh, you're on there again and then she comes walking off <laughs> i don't see her then till about nine o'clock when she wakes up for her supper but yeah i'll i'll try i'll i'll try and get her to come on next week we'll have a guest we'll have a guest appearance shall we i'll try try and get her to come on right i think we've about covered it then for this week folks it must be time for me to go and have my pizza now then must be eh? um but uh, thanks to everybody for uh, watching once again as always if you want to get in touch with us if you want to send any photos or anything um, get in touch with us there's a contact form on the website here andyshed.callpress.net um, get on the contact form there send me a message say oi Andy I want to send you a photo and I will email you back and then you'll have the email address that you can actually send photos to um, but as, as I say most weeks we, I don't actually put the email address on here because if I do I then get loads of spam um, so uh, andyshed.callpress.net and fill in the contact form on there so I, I hope we've uh, I hope we've answered one or two questions for you guys that to today uh, let me know how the phone restorations go i am about to start some restorations here myself uh i'll just let this pop up i sort of under <laughs> now i think it was christopher on about ericsson n1900 the other week wasn't it this could have been one once chris um yeah th th this came in that in all those cases in amongst all those Hundreds and hundreds of grey and ivory um, cases that I got the other week with this rather nice black um, private phone. I don't know if it's an Ericsson one or not because there doesn't seem to be any markings on it at all. Not even like a moulding number or anything, I don't think. But it has got this curious thing in the back, if I, which is like a socket. In the back of the phone, can you can you see that? I've got a curious thing in it. If anybody knows what that would have been for, please get in touch because I'm, I'm interested to know. Because it's got the normal cutout for the normal line cord and handset. So what on earth was that for? In the back of there, which appears to have. possibility of up to six contacts on it but i'm sure it's three and three the six things you can put wires on in there if i turn it that way you can probably see them better but if anybody knows what that's for let us know jimmy says maybe it's a mother-in-law speaker yeah i'm not sure how they worked on uh, on gpo phones a very few gpo phones had them the, 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 you could have them i have seen them i've not got one i've got them on french ones N nearly every french phone seems to have got a mother-in-law speaker on it you know that second speaker nearly every french phone you see seems to have one is there something about mother-in-laws in france particularly um uh, uh, Chris says the phone case you're showing looks like mine. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, yours is an Ericsson, isn't it, Chris? Um, now I don't know if it's an Ericsson or not this, because this looks very like the one that I've got on the desk here, but the one I've got on the desk is definitely not an Ericsson. Um, but yeah, it looks very similar, but the numbers are a bit different. If I get this, hang on a minute. If I get this down again, I'll give you a side-by-side -side shot. All right. uh, oh, 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 has it got enough wire on it to do it? Not really. Hang on. That's better. Right. 
I can get back far enough and show you these side by side. If you look very carefully, the numbers are different. Look at that number two. Note the point on the bottom left of the two. And note that the um, top end of the two up here is vertical. Yeah? Then look at the number two on this one. It's got no point on the bottom down here. And the top there where it's cut off is not vertical it's a different font on that one to what it is on that one now we know this one is not an Ericsson but is this one an Ericsson I don't know but it, the, the numbers are subtly different on that to what they are on the other one so there right oh crikey I'm knocking the happy home apart now I've got new wires no gold oh I've gone green as well why the hell have I gone green oh that's better thought I'd turn anything kind of awkward there for a minute all right more like it all right cracking um, yeah Chris says my n1970b yeah we've had this before haven't we about this n1970b and I said it's that's probably not the actual phone number that's probably not actually the model number of the phone that's probably the model number of a component in the phone because that number doesn't ring a bell to me uh Val oh crikey if i pronounce this wrong i'm sorry but Val valacurux is here Val valacurux valacurux um uh, but he's here anyway he's there um yeah, yeah, there's N1970B. I'd have to look that up and find out what that is. Because that number for as a modern number for a phone doesn't ring the bell. But as I've said before, Ericsson had, had part numbers that all started in N something as well. So that may be a part number for that part of the phone, but not for the whole phone, if you get my meaning. But then it could be, it could just one I don't know that it exists it could be like an n1900 but um and it's just one that i don't know of so could be i i am here to be educated as much as anyone else is right so i think i think we've about cracked it yeah, i noticed a lot of black phones going around at the moment um You know, that, none of this is what I was planning to do when I started the day. What I was planning to do when I started the day was to show you this. And I never get round to it. Dominic says, do you have any early ambassadors with the dial? They seem to be quite rare. Yes. <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, and they were funny colours as well. I've got a bright sunshine yellow on. It's a colour that I don't think they used for anything else. You remember, you remember when Telecom had yellow vans? Well, it's that yellow. And it would have been about that era as well, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, I have got one. And it's an incredibly well-built phone. Have you got one, Dominic? But it's, it's an incredibly well-put-together phone, that is. Um, uh, oh, Chris says his N1970B is on his YouTube channel. Um, give it a give it a plug then, Chris. Can you put a link to your YouTube channel in the comments? You should be able to like put a link in the comments, and then people can go and watch. Have a go. See if you see if you can put a link in the comments. 
Um, the other thing that I was going to do today was I, I was going to show you this. This came in that batch of in that batch of phones the other day as well, and I reckon this one might be Diacon because it's not faded at all, but it has got some dirty marks on here. Now the way you get rid of those dirty marks, I've got to get a bit of kitchen towel now. The way you get rid of those dirty marks, now I've got a bit of kitchen towel, is this magic stuff. I've shown this before. I went back to the power shop this week and couldn't find any. But this Aquanor multi-purpose spray, it's really good. It's kind of a poor man's WD-40 sort of thing. Um, oh, it doesn't work, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but WD-40 is good for a lot of things. Did you know WD-40 or stuff similar to WD-40 dissolves blue tack? So if you've got anything with all the old sticky blue tack in it, squirt it with WD-40 and the blue tack just disappears. I didn't know until the other day. Somebody told me the other day and I tried it and it's amazing. Um, but what this stuff does do is if you... If you've actually got a can with some in it... Alright, who's used it? That can's empty. One moment, please. As Big Clive would say. It's a good job I've got another one, isn't it? <laughs> Same stuff. It's really good for removing sticky residue, not just blue tackle. Generally, any sticky residue. And it smells fantastic as well. Probably terribly ungood for you, but it does smell rather nice. Oh, what a feeling when you're dancing on the ceiling. Doris, afraid not, Andy, although you've tempted me to get one if I can find one. Yeah, the ambassador with the dial on. Uh, yeah, good luck with that, Dominic. Um, well, I have got one somewhere. We've We've had it, I think we've had it on a show before, but it's a long time ago. Um, but I have only got that one, and since then, I think I've seen another one on eBay. And, and that's all I've ever seen. Of them. But they are incredibly well put together, but mine was faulty when it arrived. It had got some connectors dangling around inside it loose. Um, so I had a bit I had a devil of a job getting it going. There you go, sir. All nice and clean. Thanks to this Well oh, hang on, where is it? This Aquanol multi-purpose spray that you can get from one of the pound shops. Don't think it's pound land, I think it's what used to be pound world that sort of went out of business and then came back as something called One Below, which is basically still a pound shop, uh, but just with a different name. Um, but th I'm not sure it came out of that one, if it came out of Poundland. I think I think it came out of One Below. Um, but yeah, this stuff, it, it's really, really, really good. And you can use it as WD-40. It's, not, it's obviously not quite the same as WD-40 because it smells a little bit different. But it's really, really good. I shall put it up there with my other sprays and things but yeah I think this is Diacon it's got one tiny bit out of it just there if you can see that one tiny little bit missing 
up there. Now, had this been ABS, I would be able to repair that, but because it's diacon, it makes it a lot more difficult to repair. I've not yet found a way of melting diacon and, and sort of reforming it in the way I can ABS. If anybody knows of a way that you can do it, then uh, and get in touch. Right, I think that is about it for today. We, we've run the gamut of things today, haven't we? We've gone from we've gone from um, dials and and uh, microphones not working in seven four sixes um, through carbon granules in a microphone and and uh, stereogram capacitor repair and then uh, then cleaning up a diacon uh, case I think, I think it's a diacon case so we've gone through all sorts of things today in the last hour and a half or so that we've been on um, thanks to everybody who has been watching and who has taken part in the chat and things as well today <clears throat> it's always good um, so yeah I wonder if one day we ought to do this on Zoom so everybody can sort of appear in video on that. If instead of doing it on YouTube, we ought to do it on Zoom. Who's up for doing who's up for doing this on Zoom one day so you can all appear on it? Because <coughs> on Zoom you can all appear, can't you? <coughs> and then we'll upload the Zoom thing to YouTube after the event. Who's up for doing that? Let us know. Um, in the meantime, it's about time to go. Like I said, there's a pizza with my name on it somewhere. I'm sure the dog will want a bit as well. Um, thanks to everybody for uh, for taking part. Thanks to everybody for uh, for watching again. As I said earlier, if you want to get in touch with us during the week, of course you can. We never close. Uh, AndyShed.CallPress.net is the website. There's a contact us form on there as well. And I will get some of the latest episodes put on there also because... Uh, because the latest episodes aren't on it at the minute, but I will get them on there. And also, remember, if you want any phone bits or anything else uh, sort of old and interesting, check out andysemporium.callpress.net as well. There's not a lot on there at the minute, but we are adding stuff um, pretty much all the time. And that is about a wrap for another week. Uh, thanks very much to uh, all the people in the chat. Um, um, thanks to Michael T who just said great show as always. Yeah, thanks Michael. Um, thanks to Dominic. Thanks to Christopher. Um, thanks to Valakurux. I'll never be able to pronounce that as long as I live. Uh, thanks to Jimmy and everybody else, and JC, and all the rest of the people who have been out there in the chat as well. We will be back next week, all being well, same time, same place, 6 o'clock, Sunday afternoon, um, with another Andy Shed Live. Um, and yeah, we, we've got other things coming up on the channel as well that probably won't be live, but there's other new videos coming out as well fairly soon. I've been out doing a bit more of my uh, Lost Railways series as well. So when we get that edited together, that'll be appearing as well. fairly Sometime fairly soon. Went out and recorded it this last week. So for me, for now, have a great week ahead, everybody. Um, enjoy whatever you are doing. And um, we will uh, see you soon. Bye for now.